I'd like to introduce our next speaker, Yuri Shilher. Yep. So, practicing very hard. Um, who's going to be telling us about satellites and space debris? And um, I'll give you two minute warning. Okay. Thank you very much. Good morning, and thank, thank you, Mr. Chairman, for the introduction, and thank you for having me here. Uh, this work is a, a collaboration between our division, Astronomy Astrophysics, and Comenius University, where we have several students, PhD students, working on space debris characterization. Uh, it's Matej, Peter, and Tomasz. And this is a collaboration with Applied Informatics, when we have a young master student, Adam, who is actually doing the development of the service. I uh, want to present in the end of the presentation, but before I will give you some overview of what we are actually doing. So the talk will have like three logical sections. Uh, so basically, uh, resonant space objects is something we are interested in, but space debris community is interested in the artificial objects which are of no any purpose, right? So these are the space debris objects. But of course, part of the population of space, uh, resonant space objects are also active satellites. What we do, we do characterization of these uh, resonant space objects which are usually on higher orbits. When we use our telescope, you can see the population is quite crowded, so we can actually, uh, this population is uh, it's, uh, cataloged up to roughly 26,000 objects you can immediately download, but there are roughly more than 30,000 objects that are somewhere cataloged and uh, you know exactly at a specific moment when they are, and you can actually analyze them if you want and observe. From this population, uh, LEO is the most, of course, uh, dense. We know all about that. that uh, there is uh, not only active satellites and mega constellations, but there is a lot of debris objects. That's why there is a concern of, let's say, cascade effect. But from the old catalog population now, basically the Starlink, for example, or mega constellations in general are accounting for more than 20% uh, of the whole population we have up there. The work I will be presenting is partially, is partially funded by ESA project uh, called uh, Modeling the Night Sky Brightness Produced by Space Objects, which is in collaboration with uh, us, Experimental Physics Department, uh, when they are modeling uh, light pollution created by small particles, and we are responsible for uh, calculating the light pollution from the large particles. Maybe I will just mention that we in the space debris community are interested in two types of characterizing space objects. We're using either the flux, which is reflected from the object sun, from sun light flux reflected towards the object. So this is done by the photometric group, but then we have a, a group which is actually doing the analysis of the light, how it's alternate when it's actually reflected. So this was, for example, presented yesterday by our student Danica and also the, uh, Zhilkova, and also we have Katarina here, which has a poster about this topic. So how we actually uh, get, have a data, uh, we have two types of data sets. One is a catalog, public catalog, which is uh, available online. It's called Mini Mega Tortora, MMT catalog, which is uh, maintained by Kazan Federal University. It's one of the kind catalog which is actually available uh, in the world. Uh, it's a catalog which contains more than 400 light curves of artificial objects on LEO lower orbit uh, up to the medium Earth orbit. And you can see what the objects they are actually reporting and their photometric properties. On the right-hand side chart, when you see apogee uh, versus perigee altitudes, and by blue dots are marked objects which are uh, published by MMT catalog. By orange are published uh, objects which we are actually making available to the community, and uh, we have a larger system so we can go deeper, and we observe usually the higher orbits, but we are overlapping nicely in the eccentric orbits near Earth region or median Earth region. Our catalog is called a Space Debris Light Curve Data Catalog, and prim uh, primary now, it's, we are focusing there to actually provide rotation rates of the space debris objects. We have now out first version of the catalog which is available online but we are now preparing uh, the release one which will be hopefully out in mid of November which will uh, have all the objects we observe from 2017 to 2023 to provide the attitude information. This catalog will be updated next year also to contain information about the uh, standard magnitude so it can be also used for uh, phase function analysis which I will be talking about now. Basically, uh, what we, we all probably know that what is a photometric phase function, it is very commonly used in minor planet community. And similarly, it's also used in a space debris community when we're trying to use this methodology to actually characterize the objects. Uh, there have been um, several works done in the last decades towards the space functions or how to define space functions for artificial objects. And uh, there are several different approaches. You can use uh, simulations, you can use uh, laboratory measurements, you can see uh, results of my laboratory on the right hand side chart, where basically there are some materials, space based materials we are using, and you do 
face curves in the laboratory, but this is really not representative because, again, as uh, was mentioned yesterday by Danica, you don't not always have a unique single material. It's a combination of material and combination of shape, or the object is a complex shape. So if you have a light uh, phase function or spectra for laboratory, it's not very representative. You still have to do more. So we we, we actually uh, focusing mostly on data acquisition and trying to understand how to represent them. So what we do is uh, we use the phase function defined by Heidegger in 2011. Uh, this work was already presented also yesterday, or this function where you see on the left-hand side is actually the visual magnitude in Johnson V filter, and on the right-hand side, the middle, char the middle element is important when you have four different... Uh, uh, parameters. We have phase function F1 and F2 functions, which representing a diffuse sphere is a F1 and specular sphere, which is F2. And then you have beta parameter, which is actually telling you which of those is contributing more. Uh, zero means that dominant is a specular reflection, and uh, one means that the diffuse reflection is dominant uh, in your uh, data set. And we have also parameter A, which is uh, A raw, which is a, a cross section of the object which is reflecting light towards you. And rho is a geometric albedo. And those both parameters are finally getting you somewhere in the sense of uh, physical, parameter, physical definition of the object you're looking at. So we use this function actually to uh, uh, analyze real photometric data. Uh, you might ask, okay, is it really realistic? So we have this complex world when we have like 26,000 objects. From those, then we have roughly 20,000 or 90,000 different morphologies. So it's impossible to actually model each of these species. And in our uh, community, we are actually focusing on objects we don't know what they are, basically. The idea is, if I see something unknown, can I characterize it? Can I understand what it is, how it was created, and how big threat it is actually to the space environment, to the space uh, satellites. So the most logical thing is to simplify the problem as much as possible. That's why we're using uh, spheres, diffuse or specular sphere. But in general, in, already in the past when there were big campaigns pro performed on a higher orbits, it showed up that actually assuming sphere is the best approach you can do and then you just analyze how much you are off from the sphere in your uh, measurements. So here is an example of uh, photometric measurements um, shown in, with the uh, gray points. Each grade point is not one photometric measurement. If one point, grade point is the one average value of one rotational period. So what I will be presenting now, it's only rotational objects, so we have a very good look and very solid solution for each of them. And each, uh, you can really see already here that we have nicely defined borders, how the object actually is reflecting lights, lights towards the observer. When we fit it with the Hadic function, it's the blue line you see that it's following uh, something similar we can see in the uh, asteroid community. Then we have a red line, which is actually a uh, confidence interval. It's just telling you how good your fit is. But what's important, there is a prediction band, which is telling you that if, if you have this prediction band and you have this Hadoop function, you have 95% probability that your prediction of the brightness will be within this interval. So if you want to do, for example, prediction of the brightness of the object with this data, you should be uh, good to go. What we do with this type of data is try to understand what is the physical uh, properties of this object. So this is a cylindrical object, very good. Uh, we use it very often as a calibration object. Danisa was presenting spectra for this uh, CZ3 or Long March 3 upper stage. It's a third upper stage. We also use it often for attitude estimation because it's a simple uh, case where we can actually do a lot of assumptions about the object, how it's rotating. And once you know better the object, you can actually come up, for example, with uh, its uh, physical parameters like a geometric albedo, which we got for this one to be 85.9%. But this is not concern of you. The, I guess the community, uh, which is uh, interested in on, uh, understanding or predicting how much this object will affect my measurements, is important that uh, we process basically more. Uh, we checked more than 7,000 objects, which are actually published uh, in the MMT catalog. From those, 2,700 were actually rotating, so had an apparent rotation available. And then we, in total, processed 600 objects, which were, had really good uh, quality observations we filtered out. You see that we observed three different groups, satellites, upper stages, and debris objects. Upper stages, there, there is a typo, should be, or satellites should be 190. And uh, what we got is basically kind of distribution you can expect for the artificial objects in general, but we also have the distributions, representative distributions of albedo area parameter, beta parameter, absolute magnitude parameter for each of these subpopulations. Uh, so they can be used then for to do prediction 
if you want to. We find out that the most common um, uh, properties are uh, that beta is mostly diffuse for upper stages, for debris is mostly specular uh, features in included, but, and for satellites is really one-to-one -one or equal on both sides. Uh, absolute magnitude and average is roughly around uh, 28, 29 magnitude in V band. So we processed, as I mentioned, 600 objects. Here are other examples you can see. On the left-hand side is a typical box wind satellite, which is uh, uh, rotating, so they can have a really wide range of prediction bands. You can see def, uh, for Global Star uh, Constellation satellite. In the middle, you can see upper stages, Titan, very old one, Titan, 3, uh, Titan 3A, and uh, below it's uh, Atlas 5 Tower, also very good calibration object. And the right-hand side, you see example of the parameters and uh, phase curves. Uh, phase functions for uh, debris objects. The below one is actually a fragment from Iridium-33 collision, and it shows really high uh, spectral reflections behavior. So all this catalog, all these objects which we process will be available in the photometric catalog along with our uh, light curve catalog. There will be also a phase curve catalog uh, published online, hopefully, uh, during this fall. And you will every user will be able to download all these parameters, crucial parameters, beta, uh, area, albedo parameter, and uh, prediction band. So in that case, you should be very safe when you do predictions for these type of objects which are published. And now I move to the online prediction service, uh, basically, which will be using this uh, information. So once we have the brightness, we still need to know where the object is and its geometry. So what we do is we use our own software, Satellite Ephemeris, which is used on the observatory for almost more than a decade. And this software helps the user observer actually select the proper target, understand how the object will be behaving in your field of view with your uh, telescope. And it's using basically SGP4 model, which you all are probably familiar with, and uh, two-line elements. So what we did with Adam, the student of ours, is that we took the engine of this uh, prediction uh, software and we put a layer of a web uh, service around it. So here is an example in the middle animation, what can the user do? Basically, you select your observation spam. So the idea basically is that in the future, now you can predict specific object, but in the future you can just include your observation list of your fields and times, and basically the list which will go out will be the list of objects will be in your field of view. You can select the observation site by using Minor Planet Center database, which is we are directly connected to, or you can just do arbitrary position, whatever you want. Then you have to select a neuron number of your object, and once this is done, you, the system will calculate for you the ephemeris. So at the moment, this is for the observers, but we will extend it to also put a filter on it. So you will put, say, where you're looking at and what is your field of view, and we will give you the list of objects. Now we are publishing only range and uh, azimuth elevation, right station declination, but we will extend it. You will have a position angle, phase angle, and length of the trail, direction of the trail, so you can actually do your simulations if you want to. This service is actually a web service, so it means it's, uh, it's also operating system independent, so you can use Android phone, you can use Apple phone, or you can use a Windows a PC if you want to actually work with the service. So summary slides. Basically, what we do now is we have the phase functions uh, done. I think this is the best we can do with the catalog we have available. So now we also want to have a look on uh, active satellites like Starlink, but there is a different approach to be applied, and we have seen this already yesterday. So there are many different parameters you should take, keep in mind if you want to do it the right way. Uh, we want to gather our own photometric data extensively with a large telescope, but also with the private sector in Slovakia to actually cover every po possible population from low Earth orbit, geosynchronous orbit, up to cislunar orbits. Yes, thank you. And we are building up now the space debris uh, phase curve catalog, which will be published. And uh, we want to go from offline to online service, which I mentioned in the last slide. But this is now ongoing process. The master student starts the second year, so it should be done in the spring next year. And we will be very grateful if the community will actually use the server and give us some feedback so the student also have some work to do some redoing and the refinement of the software before he finishes and leave the Comenius University. Okay, and thank you very much for your attention. If you have any questions. Thank you. We have, we have time for questions. Do we have any from this audience? In the back there? Hello. Uh, thank you for a very interesting talk. Uh, light curves are very important to, the, to determine orbital parameters and uh, proceed to identification of objects because they provide information on attitude of these objects and also 
because the uh, satellites rotate, they have different materials, exactly. and they leave a, a, a specific imprint in the light curves. So um, are you going to proceed towards a, a service of identification of and provide that through a, through a portal? That will be awesome. Yes, exactly. So now I mentioned two services, right? The light curves, uh, which is rotation, and then was uh, phase functions. But we also have a research which is focusing on doing color photometry, and you have a rotational phase and colors, color indices along the rotational phase. So this is now starting. Katarina will be working on it. She is now starting the master thesis, and she will take over after Matej, who just finished his PhD in this regard. So we will also publish that, and we also plan with Danica have a spectra as well along with those three services. So there will be four services eventually available for the community. Thank you. Thank you.